Hi, everyone. Doug DeVos here. Uh, recently had a chance to sit down with Terry Hutchinson and talk about sailing. Terry's a good friend that we've gotten to know through sailing, known each other a long time, uh, and he's one of the best sailors in the world. Uh, and I think they'll come through as we talk about uh, some of the life lessons, the leadership lessons that he's learned from success, from failure, and the pathway that he's taken, uh, how he interacts with people. Uh, we spent a lot of time diving into sailing. I'm passionate about the sport as well. And so uh, you're going to learn a little bit more about sailing than maybe you thought about in the beginning. Uh, but I hope it's, uh, again, helpful. Uh, I hope it comes through who he is, his character, uh, his interest, and how uh, how sport for him really uh, confirms and teaches life lessons and how it applies really to all of us in our lives. Uh, where, you know, whatever sport we choose, whatever uh, occupation we choose, whatever direction we choose, there's a lot of life lessons that come out of it. So I hope you enjoy it. We believe and have always believed in this country that man was created in the image of God. That he was given talents and responsibilities and was instructed to use them to make this world a better place in which to live. And you see, this is the really great thing of America. It's time to discover what binds us together. And finding it has the power to transform our world. That's what I believe. How about you? Terry, thanks right. for thanks for for joining us here and uh, uh, having a little fun. We're in Pensacola uh, doing this uh, podcast here, the home base of American Magic, and uh, you know, and, and New York Yacht Club's home away from home, I guess, uh, something like that that we're doing here, um, which is which is really great. We've been so welcomed in in, in Pensacola. In fact, we're in the Port of Pensacola offices yes. right now doing this. Um, so uh, great to have a chance to be here. But I, I, I'm going to dive in, and, and just so everybody knows. Terry and I started sailing together in 2007 and uh, had quite an adventure. We'll talk a little bit about how that came together and what's happened with that since. But you know, just talk a little bit about you, Terry, before that. Talk about you, young Terry Hutchinson, falling in love with this sport, getting, getting uh, you know, started having some opportunities, people yeah. who kind of helped you along the way. Just give us a bit of a background about who you are and how you uh, – got into this uh into the sport and then yeah. we'll talk about your role as skipper of american magic and and what you've uh what you've done with the team there well the the sport of sailing for me started as a family thing you know cruising on the chesapeake, chesapeake bay with my parents and my brother and sister and i'm the youngest of three and my dad had this beautiful concordia y'all paramore and we would go down every weekend at harchies and in the west river and and i would um I was quite persistent in my dad rigging the dinghy up so I could go sailing. Because the beauty of the sport is it's the one area that you can probably be free. Yeah. There's no noise. You're out on the water. You're by yourself. And, you know, as a six, seven, eight-year-old, you develop a certain amount of independence that comes with being on that water. And, you know, from there... Um, you know, I didn't really have a lot of other redeeming qualities. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my, come on. Come my on. grades were not that great. Um, I was a... I was a substandard athlete, though I did love playing soccer, and, and uh, I played um, that through my junior year in high school, but I was always drawn to the water and always drawn to the sport. And, you know, I think for me, the, the love of the sport has evolved out of, you know, the days in the dire dinghy on the West River, uh, basically just sailing around and, you know, doing it, whatever it was at the time that a nine-year-old would do, be it, you know, just the adventure of going out and, and spending that time on the water. And it evolved out of there into um, into sailing lasers and through West River Sailing Program and the Severn Sailing Association Program, where you know I, it was really truly the one thing that I just enjoyed doing. Yeah. And I was really fortunate as a young kid um, when I was when I was uh, going to St. Mary's High School in Annapolis that the Naval Academy would l allow me to come out and sail with them. So I would rig my 420 over at SSA. I'd grab a crew and I'd go out and I'd, I'd train with the Naval Academy. And I did that starting my freshman year in high school. And so it was always cool. a, yeah, it was always a, I always knew what I wanted to do and where okay. I wanted to go. I was never quite sure how to get there. Um, and then through that, I had a couple great mentors. You know, Gary Jobson was a very good mentor when I was a young when I was a young kid, you know, he was, as he'll remind me, he's the only other Annapolitan to win the America's Cup, or actually not the only other, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself, the only Annapolitan <laughs> to win the America's Cup. And, uh, and you know, people like that that influence you. Um, Jonathan Bartlett, who was my sailing instructor, uh, my coach at Old Dominion, Casey Fulmer. And then, you know, when I graduated from college, I met Ed Reynolds, 
you know, each one of these relationships kind of plays a part in the uh, the development of the sailor and I guess of the person. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So, yeah. so dive into that. So you, so you, this love of sailing. Yeah. A few people kind of help you, but talk about how you took it to the next level from this love of sailing to this, uh, this drive to compete mm. and to win in the sport at, you know, at, at yeah. the early stages through college and then your early professional. So, how how does Terry Hutchinson go from? Uh, loving the sport, being with his family, mm. to really catching it, but but developing as one of the greatest sailors uh, in the world. Well, thank you for that. I'm not sure that's actually the case, but I appreciate you saying <laughs> that. Well, one of. Yeah, Come on, Terry. I'll, I'll give you the one of. Yeah, okay? one of 20. Yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a really good question. I mean, today when I go home, I'll go sailing because I just love being on the water. Yeah. And there is you know, when, when I was doing the junior sailing and, and got into more of the competitive side, I enjoyed the competition. I enjoyed the, um, the racing. I enjoyed, um, again, I guess the singular focus that comes when you're out on the water and you have to, you have, you know, 15 or 20 other 420s lined up in the starting line with you and all your peers are there and, and you want to, you know, you want to crush them. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> pretty so, simple, pretty yeah, simple process. Yeah, they, we win, simple. they lose. Yeah. But, it, you know, it took the encouragement of my parents. It took the encouragement of some sailing instructors. And, and when you slowly start, I was really lucky because I had, um, I achieved some success when I was relatively young. We had the 1984 420 Worlds in Annapolis that I was, when I was 15 years old, I sailed in and we finished 10th in oh. the first world out of how, how many boats out of 50 boats 50 boats yeah and we were the second american team oh. and you know there were you wouldn't have picked us to be a top 10 contender yeah. Yeah. and you know you just remember kind of the the buzz that you get and the adrenaline that you get out of that competition and you know as that evolved um not only through the junior sailing but really into the college sailing you know it, <clears throat> i knew very early on that my success in college was going to be predicated on my sailing because I had to maintain a certain GPA to, to be able <laughs> those, to compete. Those two yeah, got connected, to, right? To be able to compete as a okay. college athlete. But, you know, it... And you sailed for, for, for Old Dominion, Dominion University, yeah. yeah. And it was, it was a revolving door. So as long as I was sailing well and enjoying that side of it, the grades were always... Were always um, we're balancing it out. But, you know, through that, there were, there were falls, you know, there were things that happened when I was a freshman and, you know, learning how to, you know, go from coming into college where you were pretty good. Um, and then back to being a freshman yeah, and yeah. where, you know, the upperclassmen pound on you and haze you and, you know, it develops a certain level of mental toughness and a certain level of, um, you know, certain level of angst that you have to go out and earn your stripes. And, you know, each, kind of each phase of life when you graduate from college and you go out and you start racing in bigger one design classes and you start doing those things, you know, it's kind of, you're kind of a freshman all over again. Yeah. And so applying those lessons that I was learning uh, through school and not only on the water, but it, it's only in hindsight that you realize the, the lessons off the water. Right. Right. And you know, again, I, I was fortunate talk to through, have some... talk through some of those lessons off the water, <laughs> you know, we'll get to the other on the water yeah. one, but what, what were some of those lessons at that, you know, at, at that time, you know, as you're, as you're growing, developing, you're kind of, yeah. you know, like any sport, it's your, you know, it's your on the court, on the water mm. talents and skills, but it's the mental yeah. toughness and it's the worldview you bring to the sport. So talk, yeah. talk about some of the things that uh, started to shape you yeah. uh, at, at that time. Well, we worked really, we were fortunate because we had a lot of really good sailors on the team. Yeah. And inevitably, um, and I think something that we're going to work to probably bring to American Magic is sure. to make sure our practices are harder than the actual competition. Yeah. So that when you earn a race win in a practice, you've earned the race win. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, you, you set a standard inside, um, inside the four walls of your college sailing team or your America's Cup team that everything you do on the water is harder than it's going to be on game day. Yeah. And that's going to make game day a little bit easier because the competition is, as we know, is very, very good. And so anything that we can do to um, streamline that process is pretty important. Now that's years of hindsight. Yeah. <laughs> so when I think about back to, back to college, I had a couple situations when I was a freshman where, uh, you know, in a, in a desire to want to be, you know, 
felt as part of the team. And, you know, as a young, impressionable 18 year old, um, you know, you did silly things, stupid things that, you know, you look back at and say, boy, that was a really bad decision. Yeah. yeah. Um, we had a couple unfortunate things happened, um, uh, in between, uh, my first and second semester on the team and, and it reshaped the team. Um, and our coach allowed us the opportunity to compete, to start, you know, where it wasn't, it was no longer a, um, it was no longer a, um, like a hierarchy. Yeah. 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 He said, open. we're going to, we're going to hold a two week regatta. Whoever wins is going to start a division. Whoever finishes second is going to start B division. And that's yeah. how we're going to do it. Yeah. And that went well. So I was able to win that. And okay. from that on as that, a freshman, yeah, as a freshman. Yeah. yeah. And so from that point on, I set the trajectory for as a freshman where, where I was able basically in one semester to achieve all American status in a semester of sailing by, you know, again, as a freshman going out and, you know, running scorecards and regattas. Yeah. So, so what's that? So now you, you're yeah. starting a, you're, you're yeah. doing this, you're an all American. Yeah. Well, what's the rest of your team say? Those upperclassmen who are looking at you going, where'd this guy come from? Fortunately, we had another freshman who was second. Okay. And we had another freshman that finished third. And so we set ourselves up in a really good spot for the next four years. Whoa. And then the following year, um, the class that came in, the freshman class had two really, really talented sailors. And so all of a sudden we were achieving this. Our practices are harder than, than the actual events. Competitions, yeah. Um, but that, that made for different dynamics, you know, maintaining, um, maintaining that. I remember my sophomore year probably being the hardest on the water because I expected just to have it come. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I was able to achieve moderate success, but not nearly the same success that I did my sophomore, my freshman, freshman year. year. Really? Yeah. And, and that was a good eye opener, um, for my last two, two seasons or my last two years in college where, you know, I kind of got to a spot where I needed to put up or shut up. Yeah. You know, I had very clear goals. I wanted to be college sailor of the year. I wanted to be a four time all American. And it was kind of at that point I realized that it just was not going to come easy and I was going to have to work for it. So I took the physical side of it very seriously and went to the gym and did all the things that you would do as an athlete, right. you know, kind of got away from the sailor mentality and got into the athlete mentality okay. and, um, went through, you know, strength and conditioning programs and sports psychologists and, you know, things to help manage the red mist yeah. and, um, and really approached it in a manner that was, you know, at the time, as I reflect back on it, was raising the level of professionalism inside of it. Yeah. You know, that was, that wasn't, that's hindsight saying that, but that's kind of when that's I look back, did. that's what yeah. I did. Yeah. And the ancillary benefit of that was, um, was I got good grades which blew my parents away. Okay, the day that I graduated from college, my dad said, I thought this day would never come. And I thought, man, what does that mean? Yeah, that's right. What do you mean, dad? Come on. I mean, did you <laughs> you got to have a little faith yeah, in me somewhere yeah, here. No faith. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I believed. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah. And, um, but, you know, that type of work ethic, I think that, that evolved out of that has carried forward yeah. because each time you kind of run into brick walls or you run into people that say you can't do it, you have to refocus yourself. Yeah, yeah. And that's, um, you know, that's been something that, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, you probably carry that all the way through life yeah. because you end up in those situations where either you don't perform to the standard that you want to perform to um, or you're not carrying yourself in a manner that you want to carry yourself. And mm -hmm. so it, it requires you to to recalibrate. Yeah. So, and, and that's, you know, maybe I, I want to keep moving on, but, you know, one of the things we talk about a lot uh, on the podcast is a belief system, mm. a belief system that drives behaviors yeah. a and, and beliefs could be what you believe you can achieve by setting a goal or, or, or something along those lines. So you talk about, okay, being, you know, being f fleet a, you know, yeah. being an all American collegiate sailor of the year, all, all these sorts of things, but it drove you, you know, yeah to believe in yourself but to do the things yeah. necessary yeah. and would you say that 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 was the foundation for your you know for your yeah. career from there and, and it formed around that time yeah absolutely and I think the what helped form it was looking at sailors that were in front of me looking at the Ken Reeds and the Dave Curtis's of the world and the Kevin Mahaney's and John Kostecki's and all these sailors that were you know five or six years older than I mm -hmm. than I was but you could see what they were achieving on the water and that was a time, you know, in 87, Dennis won back the cup. And yeah. In 92, Bill won the cup in, in San Diego. In 95, 
you know, there was a transition there of sailing power over those 10 years yeah. of, of sailors. And, and what you saw was a continual evolution of the professionalism. While not completely defined, you could see it happening. And, and so, you know, I, I strive to, to achieve that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So talk a little bit, and I want to get to the cup. I, yeah. I'll, we'll get there eventually, yeah, yeah. as always. But from college, it's not a direct line no. to the America's Cup. You, no. you got, you, you're sailing on offshore boats, you're sailing on inshore boats, you're sailing wherever you can sail yeah. to kind of build your resume, to meet people, to, yeah. to, to experience different competitions, different types of boats, different types of sailing, um, to be able to have that shot. So walk us through some of the things. So you're coming out of college, you, yeah. you got all these great accolades. Yeah. Everyone wants to sail with you, but it's a different experience on it a is. bigger boat with a bigger crew. Now you really have to manage a crew, yeah. lead a team in a whole different way. And, and that's yeah. your step to what we're, you know, uh, yeah. 120 people here yeah. in American Magic or more and, and that you're leading you know, today. Yeah. So talk about that little bit of, of how, what you learned. Mm. Uh, maybe and give us a story or two of what well, you can illustrate. You it know, I think there were... I was really lucky, and and I say that well, I was, we're all lucky and say yeah, <laughs> yeah but, you, but you earned but, some of that too. Yeah, but I was I was lucky because I was able to meet uh, people that looked out for me. You yeah. know, obviously I, my relationship with Ed Reynolds yeah. is very important in that. Um, you know, we've we've argued and and bantered for the better part of of almost thirty five years, yeah. and you know the beauty of our relationship. And it's something that as, as we've gone forward in life, you know, the beauty of that relationship is I could never do what Ed did yeah. and he could never do what I could do. Yeah, yeah. And so it was the perfect uh, partnership. Par partnership because we both had strengths that we could play to. And the one time, the one time I tried to do what he could do, I completely cobbed it up. And it was when Helmut Jan purchased a brand new uh, Far, fifth, Far 50 for the Admiral's Cup. And I got over my skis and completely cobbed the whole thing up and... The sale order ended up going to North Sales, oh, really? <laughs> but but it's these little experiences that you realize. Um, and also, when I look at how um, how Ed helped, you know, for lack of better words, manage me through some of the programs I had the opportunity yeah. to sail with Dr. Oliver Grin from mm -hmm. Grand Rapids sure, on yeah. collaboration, and yeah. and Ed introduced me to Ed Adams and to Bill Shore, and Bill sailed with me on the J twenty four, which was you know again you know, kind of mentoring guys that were older, but really, really skilled. Each had different um, skill sets that allowed, you know, they could start polishing yeah. what was a rough piece of bark and then start sanding off the edges a little bit. But you, you got put into some position. So as you talk about it, you get put in some position, but you got to perform. Yes. Right. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're, yeah. you're, you're coming in, you're younger and you're expected to fill a role in a team now in a, in a yeah. bit of a different capacity. Yeah. Right. Well, one, op one opportunity was with Dr. Grin in, in Chicago, sailing with Bruce Nelson on collaboration. And we had a, we had a couple other boats that were very competitive against, and actually were probably better boats in collaboration. Um, but Bruce was exceptionally good at steering the boat. And, and as we raced a couple of regattas, he kept saying, you must be really good or really lucky. Because we kept on finding our way to the front, uh -huh. and after the course of you were you were the tactician. Yeah, I was a tactician, uh -huh. and after the course of the summer, I said, "Well, maybe I'm just really good, Bruce." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but you know, you have to be in those opportunities, and you have to um, have somebody that's going to open the door for you, and then you have to be willing to take it. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think what you just said is right. I mean, put yourself result, out there. Yeah, results speak for themselves. Um, but in the same breath, when you're not succeeding making sure that you have people around you that can help help you through the why you're not succeeding because yeah. that's um that's probably as equally as important if not more important than what happens when you're winning yeah absolutely so just just to, to clarify for uh you, you you're using a lot of names yeah that sailors would know yes. but not a lot of other folks would know no. but you know the, the bruce nelsons or the yeah. kenny reeds and and the bill shores these are very accomplished yes. solid you know amazing sailors you know yeah. in their own right and you had a chance to yeah to be with them and, and the other names that you've you, you, you've used as well well you'd have to like any industry yeah. you know you'd have to say that they're you know for a lack of better words they're leaders or icons in our industry yeah. um and and so you it, while it's small 
um, you still have to do right by when they recommend you, you still have to do right by that recommendation. Mm -hmm. And so I always, I always was, um, yeah, probably lucky (laughs) more than (laughs) anything. Um, it wasn't until later in, in my twenties that I realized that, you know, maybe, you know, all it takes is one child to be born that you realize, okay, well now, now it's real. (laughs) It's just got real. I have another mouth to feed. I have to take care of this and, and, uh, and so you, you definitely elevate the level of, of professionalism. Yeah. Which was hard for you cause you have pretty high level in the beginning. Well, but how's that, how's that happen? Yeah. So, I mean, so this is a, this is a life impact for you. Yeah. And, and now did you, did you always think that sailing was going to be your profession that you could, that this could be your life, this could be your life's work, this could be where it was. Uh, was that always what you, you you saw? Because at that stage, sailing's yeah. really kind of developed. There, there wasn't a lot of that. No. There wasn't an easy pathway to say, oh, yeah, I'm going to be a professional sailor. Yeah. Well, again, I, I think the timing of certain, certainly the generation of sailors that are my age, the timing of the world uh, economic boom and the uh, the boom of Silicon Valley and all the things that happened there economically around the world that allowed, you know, really the world to flourish financially yeah. opened up the sport to a lot of different people. Yeah. And, um, and through that, uh, I had the opportunity to go to work for Jim Richardson and who was a lawyer out of Boston. And he, you know, he was committed to, he was committed to racing. He ran two far 40 programs. Um, we had one boat in the U S and one boat in Europe. Um, but at that time that, that class was the, you know, kind of the leading class yeah. of, of proving yourself and, and cutting your teeth, so to speak, in yeah. the world of professional sailing, um, with the goal always being the America's Cup. And so I, I was fortunate that I went to work for somebody that um, I was very loyal to, and he reciprocated that. You know, we, we developed a strong friendship, and, you know, uh, he's part of my family. And, yeah. you, know, he's, you know, he's just, I was very fortunate, but that taught me, you know, like my relationship with Ed, you know, the loyalty yeah. that we have in our relationship, the loyalty that you share with people that you work for. I mean, you do it by being honest and hardworking and, you know, showing up, you know, because it's easy not to show up and uh, and still uh, making sure that you perform on the water. And so when we got into it in the early days and recognizing the opportunity that Jim was providing, um, I s- made sure that I had really good teammates and we yeah. developed a strong team, a strong nucleus of professional sailors, and we sprinkled that with some incredibly talented amateur sailors. Yeah. Um, and he, you quickly realize that everybody likes to win. <laughs> and so, if you're committed to winning, then it makes it um, it makes it really easy because yeah. everybody's willing to put in the effort. Yeah. And if you lead from the spot of being the hardest working person on the boat and expect that out of your teammates, um, then it's but that's not just saying it, you know, yeah. that's actually doing it, doing it, turning your beliefs into yeah. behaviors. Yeah, right. exactly. Right. Yeah. And that, you know, but I think others, you know, others saw that and every single time another owner would ask, Hey, can you come and race with me and leave the barking mad? The answer was always no, yeah. because yeah. you know, it wasn't broken. So, yeah. um, you know, at that point, whatever was going to be offered, uh, in the short term financial side of it was never going to be worth it because the relationship side was too important. Yeah, yeah. And so that, that was kind of the strategy. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> there you go. and, but because I worked for, you know, I worked for Jim for you know, the better part of 15 years and I've worked mm-hmm. for you for the better part of 15 yeah, years yeah. and Hap for 10 years. I mean, truly there's like, and Alex Roper's for six yeah, years. Yeah. I mean, there's, you know, four or five people and John Kilroy for yeah. a couple seasons yeah. Um, you know, that's it. That's it. Yeah. But, but it's more than that's it because we all know the, the, the sweat equity that goes in behind that and, and the, um, and the commitment that it takes to, you know, we have to fit, you know, personalities have to fit. It has to work. Uh, and, and so that, that side of it, I always find in retrospect, that's what I find kind of the most rewarding side because the results, you know, the results are equally as rewarding, but at the end of the day, um, 
as you banter back and forth with your teammates, mm-hmm. you know, we know that the sailing side of it will slow down and it'll become more enjoying the water for being on the water back to that yeah. nine year old kid in the dinghy yeah. where you're just going out for the peace and tranquility of being yeah. on the water. Yeah. So, but, but as you're talking, you know, you, you're in, in let's kind of start working towards the America's mm-hmm. cup now and uh, maybe a couple of things. One is you talk about transition from college to professional sailing. Now you're a team leader. And you've got to bring together different people, including owners, mm-hmm. including professionals, including amateurs, in, in different positions on the boat. Like you know, like any other team, they have different roles, responsibilities on the team. And, and let's set the stage a little bit for the America's Cup. So mm-hmm. this this is the oldest trophy yeah. in the history of sport. Yeah, um, 1851 is when this competition begins. The New York Yacht Club in the United States. Mm. Own this thing <laughs> for 132 years. Yeah. This competition, and, and through until 1983, it's the longest winning streak in, in in history. Australia wins it, and then the cup goes on a journey. It's been back to the U.S. as you said. Dennis Conner won it back in '87, and then yeah. it, it was maintained here with Bill Coke in '92, and 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 then it's kind of started yeah. on its journey. And along the way, the New York Yacht Club stopped competing. Yeah, and now. You know, in the last competition, now the New York Yacht Club wants to engage again, mm. and you have the chance to uh, to lead, you know, lead yeah. this team and pull it together. But before that, you've sailed in this competition. Yeah, talk about your other experiences between you know yeah. New York Yacht Club losing it in 1983 and Terry Hutchinson leading the effort to to, to bring it back. In, starting in 2017 yeah and and so why don't you start with where you are in 1983 <laughs> at, at the time because yeah. I, so I, I know i know yeah, that story you know but that I, story. I want everybody so to know in, that story in 1983 i'm a freshman in high school and i'm sitting in uh religion class at saint mary's in uh in annapolis and i knew that the race was on it was race seven um and dennis you know, Dennis had done a really good job to stay in the hunt because his boat was not as fast. And um, so I was kind of, you know, I raised my hand and said, you know, I, I need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> so I, I got up and I went to the bathroom at Marmaduke's Pub <laughs> and uh, walked out of school, walked down across the Eastport Bridge down to a famous sailor uh, hangout on um, 3rd Street, Marmaduke's, and walked in and sat on the bar next to a couple of the other sailors. And there we all were lined up and watching the, watching America, the America's Cup, watching Dennis lose. And... And so once I got outside of uh, detention, about six months later, both from the school and my parents, um, you know, the, the hook was firmly set. And then in 1987, when I was at Old Dominion watching Dennis, you know, getting up middle late night, in the middle of the night. As he watch, wins it from yeah, Perth, Australia. Yeah, to watch Dennis win it back. And then in 92, when uh, Coke won in San Diego, again, you started watching all these and you started to slowly get bit by the, uh, well, I had been bit by the bugs yeah, since right. I was a kid, so it wasn't a slow thing. And uh, and then, you know, when you fast forward to you know, when I reflect back on my career, I kind of had you know, for whatever, as Ed will remind me, I had three stated goals: I wanted to be Rolex Yachtsman of the Year, I wanted to win a J twenty four Worlds, and I wanted to win the America's Cup. So I got one two, left to do. Two down, two down, two down, one to go. Yeah, and um, and so. When I had the opportunity, again, I was very fortunate to go to work for Paul Kayard and John Kostecki at, a, at America One, representing the St. Francis Yacht Club. This was 2000? Yeah, this was 2000. Competitions in New Zealand? Yeah, and we made it to the Louis Vuitton final where we lost to Luna Rosa 5-4, and it is an incredible, yeah. like, your entry into the America's Cup, that was my entry in, yeah. and I thought, oh, I mean, this is, a, this is a drug and an addiction like you can't ever experience because... You know the the complexity of the program and the strength of that team. You know, really demonstrated. You know, Paul was on the top of his game, and John was on the top of his game, and they both had a lot of very good experience out of the '95 Cup. And you know, Paul knew a lot about the boats, and so you could see all the correct pieces to the puzzle. Yeah. And um, you know, we fell short there uh, on time. And what know, were you doing on the boat? This I time? was trimming the main. Trimming the main. Yeah. Which, in hindsight, I mean. When I reflect back on that experience, I was hired to do something else, and and Paul said, "Well, I want you to trim the main." I didn't really want to trim the main. Okay. I wasn't a very good mainsail trimmer. Um, Sean Clarkson will tell you that. <laughs> and Sean Shawnee will tell us a lot of stuff, yeah, but we'll we'll, 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 we'll stuff. save that for um, another time. But you know, you 
I got to see the boat in a different way. Yeah. And so when I think about that experience and how it applies to the rest of the sailing, um, yeah, that was an unbelievable experience yeah. because I was doing something that I didn't know how to do. So I had to learn a new job, had to learn about the team dynamic. And I got to do it watching two guys who were without question. Really good. Yeah, really, really good. And at the best, they were at the top of their game. And so that was an incredible opportunity and learning experience. And it gave a certain level of credibility when I came out of that program to, to um, keep facilitating the professional side of um, the sport and, and racing and developing those skills, but all coming with the background and the knowledge of the previous 14 months of doing that campaign. And uh, then in 2003, I went to work for Dennis at Stars and Stripes, which was you know, a dream come true. Sure, Dennis the Connor, I, the icon the, the of the sport, sure, yep. and the America's Cup for sure. When I went to his house uh, to be interviewed in the, uh, it was the fall of, that cup was in 2003, so it was the fall of 2001. Um, I went and interviewed, and I walked in, and he has the America's Cup in the case, and there's Dennis. He shakes my hand and says, come on in and sit down, and you know, I want to talk to you. And it's like, oh, my God, pinch me, because yeah. I've just died and gone to heaven. Here I am in Dennis Connor's house. This is so cool. Yeah. <laughs> I actually went downstairs and and called home and, and told Shell that I was in the dentist's bathroom and I had to call somebody to tell. <laughs> and so, you know, it's just one of those things that sticks with you. Yeah. And it was just an, and that, that program was kind of the opposite of America one. We had some really good people, but we mm-hmm. didn't have the intellectual property that we had. It's uh, the same, you know, all the infrastructure yeah, around all it of and it. all that. You know, yeah. it just, it made you realize again on the opposite side, how hard it was. Yeah. Um, and then from there, um, in the fall of 2004, um, I went and interviewed with Team New Zealand. Actually, spring of 2004, I went and interviewed with Team New Zealand. I flew down to Auckland for a day and met Grant Dalton. And, you know, that, that meeting um, with, I think, well, I know with the support of Dennis and with the support of Tom Whidden, you know, they facilitated uh, with great recommendations to Daltz. Um, that probably, that one meeting changed, you know, certainly one course of my career uh, for the better where I stepped into the opportunity with a team that was reasonably wounded, yeah. you know, from the defeat. Just lost. They yeah, had just, just so lost. Team New Zealand just loses the cup in 2003 yeah. and want to go back and get it for the 2007 campaign. Yeah, but it was, it was, I think it was more than, it was more than that. I mean, they did lose. They went down in flames. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the boat was The unreliable. way they lost. Yeah, yeah. it was the way yeah, they was lost. Tough. So, so that was, that was, um, but Daltz, I mean, I have unending respect for him yeah. because he, he stuck with it, and 13 years later, he won the regatta. Yeah. And that, that to me, is the type of mental fortitude that that freshman college sailor needed to have. There you go. Yeah. And so you can kind of you can draw a line all the way to those, you know, watching people that you respect. And in that regatta, you know, we had everything that we needed, but a fast boat. Mm. You know, we outsailed a lingi, um, but they had a faster boat. Yeah. And they were, you know, they. The other thing that came out of that was the relevance of the team because Russell had left Alinghi and Ed Baird, uh, who we've had the pleasure to race with, um, he was a helmsman. And yet they replaced who probably some people thought was the most critical component with somebody who was equally as good. But, you know, for whatever reason, he was an outsider to the group. And, And, you know, what it demonstrated was the team is way bigger than the individual. Yeah, yeah. And that team mentality and, and their ability to um, to develop uh, without Russell, yeah. um, in my mind, elevated the status of no, Brad, we, yeah, Brad, yeah, Brad Butterworth and yeah. Warwick Flurry and, and Murray Jones and Simon Dobney and you know so on and so forth. Just yeah. that incredibly talented group of sailors, yeah. and um, they were smart enough that they chose Ed, yeah. and Ed did his job yeah. to the T. Um, you know, talk, now talk about that competition because now you're yeah. in the America's Cup. You're yeah. with Team New Zealand. And New Zealand really wasn't necessarily expected to be there. I mean, so you're yeah. really on a roll. You're getting there, and you're giving yeah. Alinghi a run for their money. Yeah. And it comes down to the last yeah. race, and, yeah. and and I won't ask you to go into too much detail, but. Well, I have all the detail if you'd like. <laughs> 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 we received the first well, we, penalty in race seven in America's Cup history. Yeah. And uh, we were, you know, that regatta, um, every now and then I'll go back and I'll watch. The race? Yeah, I'll watch all the racing. All of them. Yeah. And 
prior to the start of that, um, when we were designing 92, um, you know, you looked a lot. 92 was the boat. Yeah. The yeah, boat. Yeah. yeah. NZL 92. So when you look at a lot of the statistics of the competition, like 95% of the races were won by the first cross. Yeah. And 98% of the races were won by the boat that led at the first top mark. And in that regatta, we led five of the seven races at the first top mark. Mm. And we didn't win the regatta. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, there was subtle little things in there. There was, you know, the implementation of a gate mark at the bottom. So they, you know, you, you didn't have to follow the person around. Right. And, right. And, you know, but the deltas and over that seven race series was 19 seconds yeah. across seven races. And then, you know, that was probably shortened by the fact that we lost our last race by a second. And one second. One second. One second. Probably half the length of this desk here in front of us. Hmm. And, you know, I can remember, yeah, I just, I can remember so vividly the weather call on the first, um, on the first beat was this is as far right as the breeze is going to be. And so you want to protect the upper left. And so we got a great start to, to the left of them, forced them off to the right. And we're in reasonably good control the entire race. Um, and, and yet they just, yeah, they just kept hanging tough and would not go away. So they led us around the top. Uh, we passed them down the run and led through the gate. And basically, again, like I can remember mumbling in the comms, you know, the breeze is supposed to stay left, right, guys? Yeah, you know, the breeze is going to be left. It's yeah. going to be left. So we kept protecting the left. Uh, we missed one opportunity halfway up the, the second beat to switch to the right of them. And we didn't take it because the call was we liked the left. Yeah. And so the faster boat kept chipping away at us. And um, as we got on later in the leg, we copped a penalty, which was, you know, the first pe penalty in 32 editions of the America's Cup. And so we went around the top mark, you know, four or five lengths behind them carrying a penalty, not in the lead. And so right. we had a lot of work to do. And as we did, we battled through it and we yeah. got into the lead and, and we did our penalty turn about a, you know, about 75 feet too far away from the finish line. And, uh, and Olingi had a, the breeze shifted. Olingi had a couple of mechanical failures on board. And so they presented the opportunity and we, we put ourselves yeah. in position to take it. And, you know, unfortunately it just didn't go our way. One second. One second. One second difference. Mm. Yeah. And that's, but that's sport. You, yeah. You know, and that's, and the, you carry uh, that with you and, yeah. the, and that shapes where yeah. you go from there. So now it's 2007. Keep, keep, yeah. keep going through and we'll, we'll talk about two. Well, well, let's start. You know, so 2007. So right after this happens, yeah. one of the most, you know, influential or impactful things in your life at this stage. Mm. Um, the second I most, get introduced. The second most impact. <laughs> I'm I'm not being facetious here. The second most impactful meeting in my life happened. Well, then I get a chance to to meet you and yeah. and invite you to go sail with yeah. us on uh, what was WindQuest at that time. Yeah. What became Quantum Racing, which you really developed and led and uh, turned into a great you know, uh, uh, an amazing program and, and uh, series with yeah. a lot of other great sailors in, in that competition, certainly on the boat. Um, so that's, that's the yeah. beginning of our, that's yeah. the beginning of our, but it's right afterwards. And I, and I remember thinking, you know, as I, as we've discussed before, when Ed Reynolds says, well, call Terry Hutchinson, he might, he, he, he might want to sail with you. And I said, Ed, we've been sailing so poorly. He's just been in the America's cup. There's no way. And he goes, well, I've, I've worked with him a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I knew him when he was young. I, I, I tried to help him, so he owes me one. Yeah. So, so that's kind of the way it... Uh, I owe him more than one. Uh, yeah. so, well, he, yeah, yeah. so the, that's the way it ended up. And yeah. so that's when our relationship yeah. started. Um, but you still had a little more America's Cup to, to do. Yeah. No, that's... Well, yeah, I mean, again, you go back to like certain moments and certain times that you meet people, and you think about that first regatta that we did in Palma. Yeah. And, uh, you know, some of our first exchanges where, you know, it was very quickly, hey, why don't you let me do this? let me steer through this one, Doug, so I don't have to, okay, here you go. And <laughs> you'd hand it off and I'd mess it up and hand it back to you. You go, well, geez, Terry, I could have done that. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I didn't need you to do that. I could have done that I myself. Up all by myself. <laughs> yeah. I'm really good at that. Um, but you know, we kind of started laying the foundation yeah. to developing, um, not only an incredible friendship and, and, um, but also developing an incredible team. Yeah. And, and, but it all, again, it kind of, all flourishes out of things that we can and can't do. Yeah. And, you know, you can do certain things that I can't do and, and you can go all the way through the boat and you can see that. And yet we always kind of, 
we always kind of beat the drum of you're only as good as the person you're sitting next to. Yeah, yeah we're all in this together. Yeah, we're all in it together. And and so we we started developing that culture of inside the lifelines and making sure that we take care of every single one of those details because ultimately our success or our failure was going to be in our hands. And that was probably, the, well, we know that's just the way we want it. Yeah, yeah. And um, and so from there, as, as those you know, regattas and years evolved, um, you know, I think you were in the heyday of running Amway Yeah, and it was a little busy. Yeah, a little busy, <laughs> but, but you know, you never, you never really, you probably don't see it as much, uh, because you're coming and going and you live in it, but you know, the impact of, of people on teams and stuff like that. I mean, we can feel it when we're on the boat and we can see it when we're, whether we're walking through our shed here or, you know, the impact that, you know, some of us have to the team because, of the energy that's brought or the or the strength of the people together and you know that's where we i think the 2007 um that event in palma and then the worlds in in port of chervo where we crashed into king harold um well because of that we did get a visit to the royal yacht we did to see the king yeah. and <laughs> yes. and his sailing team yes. to apologize yeah. and he had a few some rum. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right um but, you know, very quickly, we developed a, a culture of we're all in it together. Yeah. And, you know, I think as we evolve through sports and as you see that, uh, be it in sports or in your experiences in business, the tighter that team is and the, the more the team can survive the highs and lows together, the out, outside the back, it's only going to be that much better. Yeah. And so, you know, from there, we spent the better part of, of 12 seasons winning world championships and season championships yeah. and regattas that some that we deserve to win and probably some that we didn't deserve to win, but we won because we worked harder. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, you, you can't help but think that any shortcoming we had, we made up with in work ethic, working hard, working yeah. hard. There's something that happened as you talk about the worlds in Puerto Chervo 2007. Um, when we're together there and you were released from team New Zealand mm, yeah. and, and then in, 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 these are, you talk about Grant Dalton, yeah. you know, you have tremendous respect for him. You've, and then you went on sale with Paul Kayard and, yeah. and that didn't work, yeah, yeah. It didn't work. but yet you have great respect for them and they have tremendous respect for you and yeah. you've maintained great relationships, even though those things hurt and yeah. might be a bit of a setback. But that was the thing that, that, you know, I was able to just having met you, watch you come on the boat, change the trajectory of what we were doing, and then see you go through that, and how you handled that, how you handled, you know, that difficult situation, that challenge, was really impressive because it it, it was it, it was like a, like a sports situation, like like losing by one second. It is what it is. We're moving on. Yeah, we're moving on. We're going to take it, learn, and, and, and go from there. Yeah. Well, that was, yeah, that getting, you know, getting fired and, and then reading that I quit. Yeah. <laughs> that was, uh, that was a tough, yeah. yeah, that was, that was a bit brutal. And I have to give Shell credit cause she sent Daltz a, uh, email that said Hutchinson's don't quit. <laughs> it's like, she's right. <laughs> and here we sit today. <laughs> yeah, that's right. There you go. But you know, I mean, those are, you know, I mean, those are qualities that I'm certainly my parents instilled in me and, and that rolls down the family tree, yeah, you know, I mean, yeah. those are, you know, you have impactful people in your life, but you know, I mean, we all, you know, we all have a responsibility to yeah. each other to kind of carry ourselves in a manner, yeah. um, that at any given time as a team member that you can look at it and say, yep, yeah, well, I'm glad he's on my side or, yeah. or occasionally you can call me out or vice versa. Yeah. And so having that comfort with those relationships probably changes the trajectory of how we go with things yeah but it's, it, i think it just speaks to your character and that's one of the one of the things that uh, will will keep going as your leadership uh, you know at american magic you know you talked early on about people who helped you and you talked about your partnership with ed reynolds and you mm -hmm. talked about that and even when the relationship took a step back or didn't go as mm -hmm. planned you maintained the relationship you you stayed with it and, and you accepted uh, the good and the bad, but I think it's an incredible characteristic. So we'll, we'll, we'll fast forward. Now it's um, 
and, and trying to make sure I get the summer, uh, the seasons right. You've been sailing with Hapfouth yeah. on Bellamente, and uh, you're sailing with him at Regatta. Yeah. And the America's Cup has just been won by New Zealand. It's going to kind of be open. We we had talked about yeah. it in the past, and and. Yeah. I'm on a phone call with you guys. Yeah, we're in Greece. <laughs> You're in Greece. I'm in northern Michigan. And um, we start talking about this opportunity to, yeah. to, to, to form a team. Uh, and you are the common bond between Hap and me. We've met each other. We've known each other. Really like you know, Hap's amazing guy, amazing sailor. You've, you know, the success that, that we've enjoyed and that yeah. you've enjoyed in your career, you, Hap has enjoyed with, you know, sailing with you as well. And, um, so now we start on this journey with American Magic, and, and we re-engage with, uh, or, or the New York Yacht Club, I should say, re-engages with the America's Cup with our team, and, and Terry Hutchinson's the skipper. Mm -hmm. But it's it's not a one-hit wonder. So I always think sometimes people yeah. are like, well, where'd you pick him from? Well, how'd that happen? And as we've just been talking, it's the years and the yeah. preparation and all the things. Now you're you're heading up. You're not just in the America's Cup. You're heading up the team mm. and, and, and you're assembling the players and it's not just inside the lifelines it's the design team it's the sailing team it's it, it's the whole impact it's connecting with the new york yacht club talk about that experience a little bit and 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 um and, and how uh, how you saw everything coming together so it's 2017 yeah. we're organizing uh we we have this wonderful opportunity to connect with Roger Penske, who yeah. joins us, uh, who's that was incredible. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> we, we could spend yeah lots and lots of time talking about how wonderful he is as well, and um, in, in so many ways. And now here we go. Yeah. So so here we how go. how do you think about that? It's, well, I think you know, the, five and a half years ago now. Yeah, I think we um, I think we all ended up in that spot because we all see we see life and things the same way. We have a certain amount of um, common bond that you can do a lot more with a handshake than you can with a contract. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, by, you know, always being, trying to continue to be, whether or not I delivered, um, but always trying to be that person that you guys knew that I was trustworthy and honest yeah. and yeah. would always work hard for you. Yeah. Win or lose, you know, yeah. those were yeah. going to be the consistent things. And yeah. so when we def decided to form you know, our, our America's cup team, you know, we knew in some way, shape or form, it was going to take all of us and then the team around us to build into what we have today. And, you know, we, we did what we always do. We went to the people that we knew and that we trusted and that had always delivered for us in the past. And we started there and we grew, we grew it out from there. Kind of always making sure though, that whoever came into the team, um, shared in those values, you know, work ethic and trust and honest yeah because yeah. there's too much at stake not not i mean there's a lot at stake financially yeah. but there's too much at, at stake um for our personal relationship relationally yeah, yeah to the partnership yeah to compromise it in any other way yeah. and you know that i mean i i think about what happened in january of of 2021 so so just you know yeah. so, here, so here we are sorry. It, 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 <laughs> so we'll, we're let's, talking let's about make the sure we, yacht club. let's, yeah. let's make sure <laughs> we right. connect the dots yeah, okay. you know, so we the for, the team yeah, forms and, and we are we're in new zealand sailing um and as soon as the competition so we hit you know hit, had shown all the indications mm -hmm. and measures of being really at the top of the game one yeah. of the one of the strongest competitors and then our first four races yeah you know or we, yeah well, they were duds. Yeah. And, um, or, or first, however yeah, many. Our, yeah. yeah. Our first three races first were duds. Three. And then yeah. the fourth one was catastrophic. Um, the boat crashes. Yeah. The boat crashes. Hole in the boat. Hole in the boat. You're, boat tra sinks. you're trapped. Yeah. I'm trapped. As the boat tips over. Yeah. All things that were, uh, reasonably unpleasant. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. But without question, an absolute test of all of our characters. And, you know, that's, you know, I, as I reflect on it all and even our partnership with the New York Yacht Club, yeah, you know, yeah. each, each mountain that we've gone over collectively together. And we know that they're, I mean, some of them have been really hard, you know, they're, yeah. they're very, um, you know, it's a side of, of certainly a side of our sport. Why we measure ourselves on the water. There is this whole other area of, um, feedback that you get that is, um, uninformed and you always worry about, you know, 
like I, I worry mm-hmm. about it, how you, how that all feels emotionally. Mm-hmm. And you've learned a lot. I've learned a lot through the last two years about how to, um, how to rise above it all. I mean mm-hmm. that, but that's, you know, that comes back to the strength of our team. That comes yeah. back to you and Hap and how, um, you guys have seen enough things in your lives that you can, you can not through words, but through your actions and through how you lead us, um, you can show us which, which are the big ones to fight and which are the ones to let go by the wayside. Well, it's always, always interesting. And, you know, in any sport, you know, you, you have those who are really close to it and know what yeah. happened and, and folks who watched and, and mm. think that, you know, yeah. or, and, and not right or wrong, but they, they, they're not as you know close to it. Yeah. But the ability from crashing almost sinking yeah. and, and, and destroying all the equipment inside the boat, the yeah. team rallied. Yeah. That night, yeah. we get in there, it's 1 o'clock in the morning yeah. or something like that. You pull the team together and you say, we're going to rebuild it. And the team had already been working about how we're going to rebuild mm-hmm. it, how we're going to fix the hole, how we're going to get back on the water. Ten days later, yeah. eight days later, we're sailing. Ten days later, we're competing. Yeah. Again, now, the, the, the boat wasn't quite the yeah. same, but – the team came together, and I and, and I remember in New Zealand, as you talk about the character of the team, first of all, we had sportsmanship in the America's Cup. A lot of other teams yeah. helped us along the way. But our team, nonstop, 24-7, American yeah. Magic, led to, to get us back on the water. Uh, an, an unbelievable me- yeah. uh, 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 effort, and if you weren't there, there's no – I can't, yeah, I can't describe can't it. Words. I can't yeah. put it into words. I yeah. can't describe it, what everybody did. It, it, it's a superhuman uh, type of effort. But the crash wasn't the end. We got back on the water. Yeah. We, we were unsuccessful. Mm. But at the time, mm. we all look at each other and say, well, this can't be the end. No. But I, I, you touched on the competitor side, and I think that's – the evolution of the New York Yacht Club and the evolution of, of our racing together and the respect that all the competitors showed to yeah, us, yeah. That, was a, that was a signal of what they thought about the New York Yacht Club and what they thought about our team, yeah. and that they respected us. They respected the, um, the uh, history of the club inside the, inside the game of the America's Cup, mm-hmm. and they recognized that the America's Cup was better with the New York Yacht Club in it, Absolutely. as we do, and as, the, and as the club Absolutely. does. I mean, that's probably, that's probably the most um, rewarding side of it because yeah. none of it comes easy. Yeah. And I think, as you, as you just pointed out, you know, we're sitting here today, as my brother reminded me when we, when we agreed to do all this again, he goes, boy, Terry, I can't believe they're hiring you back after that. <laughs> But it's a testament to our relationships. And, 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 and we knew what happened. Yeah. Yeah. No, we did. And it's, I, when I think about you know, some of the other moments that we've talked about, you know, getting fired by Grant Dalton and some of the, some of the, the letdowns over the course of the, um, of the last 20 years or 25 years, I never would have thought that they would have prepared me for that moment. Mm-hmm. But that's probably what was happening. Yeah. Somewhere, you know, God knew he had his plan for me and said, all right, this isn't going to be easy. Yeah. You're going to have to bear with me and we're going to work through this. Yeah. But, but yeah, that was a, um, that was something that I don't, yeah, I would never wish on my fiercest competitor sure. yeah. because it's something that, you know, we knew how much effort had gone into that moment and we knew, um, that we had, we were far from perfect, but that we had an opportunity. And so, you know, I think when you reflect back on the team building, that we did there that it would have been a very easy thing for the team to not go back out on the water. Yeah. But yeah. the measure of us yeah. was not how we got knocked down, but how we got back, back up. up again. Yeah. Absolutely. And so that was a, that was a perfect example of getting up. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And now, you know, you know, a lot of times teams will enter this competition once it'll work. It won't. And then they yeah. kind of fade away. We all looked at each other and said, well, we're not done yet. Yeah. You know, we, we, the, all the work that brought us said, we've got, we're, we're starting with something special here. So talk about, okay, we come out of, come out of New Zealand, did not go the way we yeah. all wanted it to go. And, but what was the first thing we all looked at ourselves with the most, critical eyes mm-hmm. that we could we invited a lot of eyes in to look at us what did we do right what did we do wrong yeah. and what are we going to do different 
Yeah. So now here we are. Yeah. We're in Pensacola, Florida. We're into this uh, yeah. competition. We're going to go back out on the water here momentarily yeah. with uh, the new AC40. Yeah. Uh, after a, a season of sailing of the AC75, we're getting ready to head to uh, Barcelona. Yeah. Well, here I, we are. Yeah, here we are. And I, I have to say that when I reflect back on 2021 and probably certain parts of um, early part of 2022, you know, there was, without question, it's probably the worst if I had to pick a 12 month period in my yeah, life, yeah. that was without question, the worst part of it. Yeah. And, and the, the questions that you kind of get answered there, um, you know, when we're on the boat and we're doing stuff on the boat, it's very simple because everything's very black and white yeah. and you can see it all. But over that course of time, um, you know, you and Hap had trusted me for the better part of 15 years when we were racing. And that was a, that was a period of time where I had to trust you guys. Yeah because I couldn't see the pathway for it. I couldn't see, you know, all the, all the things that you just described, which I, you know, I took as self-criticism and, you know, things that you, you know, that you wear because you're passionate about it. But, you know, w what made us, what makes us sitting here today a better team is because, you know, there's a certain element of, you know, I have to trust you. And, mm -hmm. you know, when you guys are in your element, it's, it's not, like it is when it's on the boat, but it's yeah. still very relevant. And so, you know, we navigated through that period of time, which again, I would say was not the most pleasant time. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, but we are here and, you know, we trust the vision of, of the team and what we're putting together and what we're creating and expanding it out, um, to the, to the wider community. But, you know, we've, we've made decisions here that, um, when we stopped the program for 12 months, our competitors, some of our competitors get, kept going mm -hmm. and we all recognize that. And, and yet we made decisions here that are making us stronger on the water that are highlighting the lessons learned from AC 36. So we can bloody ourselves in house mm -hmm. and we can make those competition, uh, internally harder than the actual event. Yep. And, and we have sailors that can execute it. Yep. Um, and then we built you know, somewhat of a homegrown design team through Scott Ferguson, which has just been awesome to watch because, uh, you know, Britt Ward, who's a fellow Annapolitan, you know, has never won the America's Cup, but is a super genius. You know, there's a guy that... There's a lot of super geniuses. There around. are a lot of super <laughs> geniuses, but there's a guy that has a chip on his shoulder yeah. and he wants to win the America's Cup, not because... It's a good thing he does because you don't, right? Well, you know, <laughs> I've got two chips. Yeah, you're well so, balanced, right? Yeah, I yeah. am well balanced. well balanced. But, you know, these are, you know, yeah. when you think about the X factor in the same way that I was, you know, over a 12 month period of time, I'm trusting you and Hap to lead us out of something that was reasonably unpleasant. Um, we're trusting Britt to design us a, a regatta winning haul for the America's Cup. And there's a motivation there that you can see when you talk to him that goes well beyond just designing the boat. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's some, there's a higher, higher level there working it's for in his heart. Yeah. And, and, and everyone that, on the, yeah. And that you can't, you know, we know from all of our experience that, you know, if you're going to have two athletes or sailors that are the same, the same skill set, or even one that might not be quite as good, but he has a bigger heart. You always take that. Yeah, absolutely. Because you'll get, you know, you'll get more as a teammate. Yeah. And so in that regard, in that regard, where we're, where we're sitting here today, you know, I, I continue to advocate that we win the second half. Uh -huh. um, we've done nice work at 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 chipping through the first um, the first half of this competition and getting ourselves to a spot where we're getting ready to do the operational move to Barcelona, and then we settle into life in Spain and get ourselves into a spot that uh, you know in 15 months' time we have the opportunity to win. So so here we go. Let's talk about that. So we're we're ready to make this move. We're going in the, yeah. you're leading the, the team to Barcelona, Spain, the competitions in the fall of 2024, you said about 15 months away or so. Um, a couple new competitors have entered. So we've got the, 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 the English, the, the, the uh, Kiwis and the Italians that we competed against last time. Now you have the Swiss and the French right. that are uh, also uh, joining the fun. Yeah. So you get, you know, six teams all in Barcelona, 
all going to be practicing over these next 15 months. We're going to be running into each other, yeah. hopefully not literally, but yeah. figuratively seeing each other, getting ready for this. And if Valencia is any indication uh, of how the popularity of the event and how many people are going to be crowding around, uh, yeah. you know, in COVID in New Zealand and, you know, not that many people were, yeah. I mean, the Kiwis were all there, the whole nation, but that was kind of a one-sided affair. Yes. Um, so what's that, what's it look like as we, uh, it, to you, how do you apply these lessons learned, these values, yeah. these principles, all these beliefs, your belief system of everything that has happened that we've been talking about? How do you apply it in these next few months, as, uh, next number of months as we, as the team heads over there? Well, it's not easy. Yeah. And that, you know, I, I go back to, you know, you're only as strong as the person you're sitting next to mm -hmm. on the rail. And so part of the challenge over the next 15 months is to make sure that the rail is lined with like-minded people yeah. and that we're all thinking the same way and we're all working towards the same goal. Now, how we go about that work might not be the same that you would do or I would do it, but we're all working towards the same goal. And I think that's one of the true challenges of one of these programs is that it's much bigger now than just racing the boat. Yeah. And so I, I think when you, <clears throat> to, to be successful, we work backwards from when we have to be successful. We time ourselves up to make sure the team's peaking at the right time. And it's not just the sailing team, it's the shore team, and it's everybody that supports the operation because there's really only eight athletes on the water All at the right. time. And then there's 80 other people around that are supporting that. And so we have to put ourselves in the right mindset and we have to be confident in ourselves. We have to trust the decisions that we've made. When you contemplate uh, where we've come from and you know, Every single, as we did in AC 36, in AC 37, we're demonstrating our intent. And so we have to be willing to go out and execute on our intent, which is to win the regatta. But it's sport. And so statistically, when you look at the numbers, you know, statistically, it's not a very good number. You know, it's a 20% chance. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, I, I don't believe yeah. that. There's five other teams that yeah. are trying to make us sure we don't. That's right. So we all have the same goals. Mm -hmm. And so then it becomes about taking care of the details and continuing to improve in areas that were weak while not uh, giving up on areas that were strong. But I, I, one of the true differences in, in the two cycles and in this team versus AC36 is the two guys that are steering the boat are very seasoned foiling sailors. Um, they have a you know, Tom obviously has the pedigree of winning the 2013 Cup with Oracle and then losing again in 2017. Um, he has an Olympic gold medal. He has three Moth World Championships. Goody has three Moth World Championships and Olympic gold medal um, where they swapped Olympics. <laughs> um, and, you know, we have just in those two guys, there is a clear intent inside of our team of their ability to win. Yeah. And so our job as a team is to support that operation. Um, provide them with a piece of equipment and a development pathway that's good enough. It doesn't have to be perfect, mm -hmm. but it has to be good enough that on the day they can execute their jobs. And then we develop a support network around those sailors and the sailing team and really the entire operation that supports uh, that team mm -hmm. when they're on the water. Yeah. But we have experience. We know how to do that, which is good. We're not going at it blind. And we have the lessons learned from from. AC 36 all the way back to AC 31 yeah. in, um, or AC 30 in Auckland back in 2000. Yeah. And, and so you have to, you know, we have to recognize things that are important and things that are not important, but also trust the guys and the sailors that are sailing the boat. And that's, you know, the evolution in AC 37 is not being on the boat is a much harder, um, it's a much harder spot to be in because you have to be willing to just watch and not yeah, say anything. Yeah, let it go. Yeah, have to let the guys evolve and you have to let them develop. And then when, you know, being mindful that the guys that we're talking to, I mean, these Tom and Goody and, and Rookie, I mean, these guys are incredibly talented yeah, sailors. Yeah. And so when you go out on the day and you beat them, which we have. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Had to get that in there. Uh, <laughs> which we have. Um, you have to respect the fact yeah. that they're very good and you have to speak to them professionally and, yeah. and not, um, 
And trust them. Yeah, and trust, trust them. them. Take it forward, then the whole team. Yeah, yeah. So Terry, we're going to have to go yes. out and go sailing here in a little bit. But one of the things yeah, I'll ask you for is kind of closing thoughts. But as you talk through this, and as you know, we've had our relationship for the past fifteen years, and and the things that we've done, all the things you talk about, you apply them to sport. They apply to life. They yep. apply to business. They apply to yeah everything that you run into of of being prepared. You know, it's as simple as being a good Boy Scout, being prepared, but it's not simple. No. The, the complexities of, of leading a team, especially a team with this, the technology involved, we haven't even had the time to go into the technology yeah. and, and everything. But what, what you know, just kind of as you wrap up, you know, is, is there one story that you can think of? Is there something that kind of pulls it all together uh, to, uh, to uh, get us ready to go back out on the water again of, you know, an example or something that you've... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's race nine of the TP52 Worlds last year, you know, where we... Uh, you might not remember it. I, I think I was <laughs> there, we right? We were there, but we came off the starting line. We didn't have a great race or a great start, and, uh, you know, we rolled into... The long port tack and everybody on the rail, you know, what you hear from me is, you know, we have to hike, you know, we have to hike like we want it. We have to hike. We have to give everything here. And then as the race progressed, you know, things went our way yeah. better than you could have ever have imagined, but they went our way because we were, pre we were prepared. Yeah. Uh, we were working harder in the moment to make sure that we got the boat into a spot that we could capitalize on the next correct decision. And then, you know, we had made the first mistake, which was getting a bad start, but we didn't make the second mistake. We didn't panic. We took a deep breath and we hiked as hard as we possibly could to give the boat every competitive advantage as possible. But then we allowed you and Warwick and Daggy to do your jobs. And so it was a combination of all those things in that moment that if you could just take a snapshot of that and grow it all the way out, you know, it's a, it's a great way to get up and face the day because you just know that not everything's always going to be perfect. You're not always going to get the perfect start, you know, but it's not necessarily how you start. It's how you finish. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, we just have to be willing to finish. Yeah. And we did finish. We did finish. And we won the world. Yeah, we did. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, but you, you know, you reflect back on that moment. I mean, you think about our entire 2022 season and how, you know, like think about where we came from yeah. and where we got to. And, you know, I can't, you know, I can't think of a more satisfying year of sailing than I've ever had. And you just, all the things that we've been talking about were demonstrated yeah. there. And all the things that we've been talking about are demonstrated in American Magic and, and, yeah. and are applied. And, and as you see the team, you can see your leadership and, and, and the alignment that everyone has about we're in this together. We're going to be as creative as possible. We're going to be committed to be excellent. We're going to, you know, get everyone focused on that goal yeah. and uh we're going to go to barcelona and and uh have a good crack at it leave it, it leave it leave it all <laughs> yeah. out on the water yeah leave it all on the water well and that's that is absolutely true and i think when um when we're all said and done if we have regardless of the result if we have any energy to celebrate we probably haven't worked hard enough. That's right. <laughs> we'll remember that. Yes. <laughs> that's, a, that's a way to close. Terry, thanks for taking the time to, to, to chat through all this. Thank really you, appreciate Doug. it. All Thank right, you. my friend. Thank right, you. See you. Appreciate it.